Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Meeting up with these young folks, and they want to learn some bushcraft. I think they came to the right spot. Well, See, I'm not used to this uh, kind of idea. Yeah, it's quite, quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, this is going to be epic because uh, we even got a professional chef. But can he cook on a fire? Let's see. So what I want to do in this video, uh, if you can see the lake behind me, there's still some open water down there. I want to see if I can get the Zodiac in there. Uh, I'm not sure. There's some open water, but it's starting ice over. And there's no ice fishing allowed in this lake. But I haven't gone down to check it. So let's go check it out. I don't usually come here until later in the year, but I might have left it too long. We'll just go have a look and we'll see. Well, it's starting to ice over in the middle. We have uh, snow on the water. But I don't really think that it's that thick. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's thicker than I think, eh? Well, it's not thick enough to walk on. I can tell that, but she might be finished for the year, you never know. So Finn, he was here playing on the bank with his favorite ball, he dropped it and it rolled down the hill about 15 feet out on the ice, I'll show you where it is. Yeah, Finn, it's not really safe to walk on. Now we got to try to retrieve his ball. Because you can't really walk on this. Can't do it. I'll see if I can get it, Finn, for you with my fishing rod and hook it somehow. Try. And get right up on the ball. Oh. I had it on there. Bad cast. It keeps going left on me. Huh. I can't get it over top. I wish you uh could just go out and get it. Okay, there you go. Come on, quick, quick. Hurry. Come. Come. Good boy, you got it. I think you could hear the ice cracking. I could hear it cracking when he was out there getting his ball because where the snow is on the ice is obviously probably a tad thinner because the sun reflects and doesn't freeze the same and this and that and well I mean you'd think that that would make a difference as far as the ice being thicker but actually usually this time of year usually where the snow is because you can see these pockets these dark pockets in the snow where it's probably thinner I could hear it cracking when he got his ball but he got his ball and uh, worst case scenario, the truck's right here. So he would have been fine. You did it, Finn. You did it. There's actually a history with that ball because he lost it one time for a year. And then I went to another campsite and he found the same ball I bought him over a year ago. So it's kind of his favorite ball and he's found it a couple of times in different locations. He tends to leave it behind. But I think what spooked him is this ice is clear 
along the shore here and you know he he can see down but he doesn't quite understand what's going on he can see the bottom but um <laughs> it's like he's walking on air it kind of spooked him a little bit i guess but anyways he got his ball Yeah, it's uh, just seeming like my window of opportunity for this particular lake is gone. If I could actually get to the open water on the other side, it'd be fine. Unless I could somehow get my uh, Zodiac across the lake. But that's maybe risky. Um, I don't know. Might have to try to find somewhere else where it isn't frozen yet. So anyways, the uh, the boys from Toronto, they can stay in the cabin. I'll set my hammock outside somewhere. And uh, But it is pretty moist. There's a lot of fog. And uh, I don't know, it's just kind of damp. That's all. But I'm looking forward to this uh, meeting up with these young folks. And they want to learn some bushcraft. I think they came to the right spot, like uh, as far as a teacher, and the island is so good. There's still plants around, so it should be exciting. And we'll see if the chef can cook on a fire or even start one. So anyways, I wasn't able to fish the lake I wanted to go to. Uh, just a bit too much ice not safe to walk on, couldn't get to the open water on the far side. So basically I decided to come where we can fish and that's back to the island. Now don't be saying, oh, not the island again, because this time I've got some plans that I think you're gonna find interesting. We're gonna do some catch and cooks. I've got three young folks coming from Toronto and one of them is a professional chef. They have a YouTube channel. Uh, the chef is big on TikTok. You're going to recognize him, I'm sure. Um, his videos get millions of views every video. And uh, we're going to see. We're gonna, probably going to have to cook on a fire. But we're back here to try to catch some springs. These guys want to learn a little bit of bushcraft. Do some camping. It's pretty foggy out today, but I'm going out with Lee again and try to catch the one species of salmon I haven't caught. Actually, there's a couple, I think, but spring is big on my list. So today we're going spring fishing. Uh, the boys are flying in from Toronto this morning. We're now in Vancouver on our way to Quadra Island, where we're going to be meeting Greg Ovens for a wonderful time of wilderness cooking. Take care. So guys, Trump. Cheers. I'm going to meet up with them later this evening. But I'm staying here on Quadra Island. I'll show you the cabin for a bit before we head out and meet Lee. And uh, this is going to be epic because uh, we even got a professional chef. But can he cook on a fire? Let's see. And I wonder if he can even start a fire. i try to get him to start a bow drill fire. That'll be... You know, like, I mean, if he's going to beat me at cooking, i got to beat him at fire building or something. Well, there's the cabin. It's uh, 10 acres here. Good spot for Finn. And there's Finn over there. He just loves to get out in the bush, as you know. Okay, Finn, you're going for a boat ride. This is like deja vu. I think we're going to bring Finn on this trip, though. Oh, I want to hook into a big spring. I'm gonna go back and get a hoodie. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, well, I appreciate it again. Yeah. Thanks, man. Look forward to getting out. Hopefully, we can get you a spring this oh, time. Oh, I would love a spring. I haven't caught a spring yep. ever. Come on, sit down, man. Sit down. Sit. Good boy. 
boy. We're just gonna use that, eh? That, uh... Yeah, this is a Sagree flasher and a skinny G spoon. Okay. They usually fish on bait this time of year. Uh huh. So there's more shrimp and stuff in the uh, summer. So okay. that's why you'll fish a spoon or a plug usually in the winter. Yep. Summers you can get away more with hoochies. And because it's dark out today, you want everything to be really bright. Yeah, for sure. Well, it looks to me like the sun's gonna come out though. So. Yeah. And fishing when we're fishing about 200 feet deep. Yeah. Uh, the only color that really shows up at 200 feet is green. Uh -huh. So greens are really popular around Campbell because we're always fishing deep. So if we get a bite, I should grab that rod and give her a good tug or what? Uh, no, if it pops hey. off the downer here, yeah, it's okay. It's, ju it's just picking thing. up slack. You don't need to. Uh, you don't actually okay. need to do much. Go let it out. Okay. Just start reeling. Yeah, just reel so you can get that slack out of the line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Oh yeah, we're perfect. Fish on. Might be small, but arms getting tired. Two hundred and forty feet. <laughs> oh, I see the spinner. No, oh, did he get off again? Yeah, he did. I had them on for most of the way. Yeah. I did. I mean, you can tell the difference. Yeah, you feel it. I mean, yeah, he just got off not long ago. You got your net handy? <laughs> He's on this one. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to reel up quicker this time. Oh, yeah. Well, he's on. This guy's on. He's there coming. He's oh, coming. We got another one over here. This one's oh, right. geez. We got another one. Double header. Okay, we got two fish. Well, I might have mine closer. Just play them, huh? It's a nice one. Well, just hopefully that guy doesn't get off. It almost seems like mine got off. No, he didn't. Well, maybe we can land them both, Lee. Yeah, we'll go for it. Well, we'll try. As long as that guy doesn't get in there. Oh. <laughs> there, there. Okay, so. Well, hopefully he goes after yours. Okay, that guy's going to be too small. You can tell? Yeah, he's just, he's going to be on his side. Okay, can I just put this back for now? Take over there? I'll let you take this one. Uh, yeah. Well, I would measure it. Measure it, because we don't want to... Yeah, this guy's bigger. Yeah. Yeah, just under. Oh. Uh, okay, well, this guy doesn't feel under. No, that guy's This gone. is a bigger one. Yeah, that guy's a real one. So if you just. just we saying. just concentrate on keeping this one. Oh. He's fighting. I hope that seal doesn't get him. I just don't want to lose him. Yeah. He's a keeper. There got you him! Go. You All go. right! You got your spring. Well, I got a nice one. There, there go. we go. See? Got well, a that's nice a keeper. Oh, yeah. Well, uh... All right. Oh, man. Right on. Okay, what do you think of that? There you go. Now 
that is more like it. Nice looking fish. Yeah, nice. Beauty. They fight good in the winter too. You want to bonk them all? Yeah, sure. Gotta just keep that running. So, one spring for our catch and cook already. Enough. There, that should do it. Yeah, he'll, he might spaz out a little bit for, for a while. What do you think that is? I see about seven pounds. Yeah, I think that's probably eight or nine pounds. Is we, it? We can check it. I've got a scale yeah. up front. Well, we'll measure it or weigh it and whatever. Yeah. Okay, but let's get our uh, lines back in the water. We had a double header, one got off, but I got to keep this guy. Nice. Got another fish on here, um, but it doesn't feel as big as that last one. But hey, we're having success here. Can't complain. Oh, we're just hammering them, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> we're just hammering them. Oh, oh, another one. Another one. Double header. I think this is a real one, though, because it popped that. Well, they're all real. Well, you know, <laughs> keeper. I know what you mean. Well, I don't think well, so. No, he's not there. Well, um, it's hard to tell this guy right here, even. But we're hammering him, Lee. Okay. He needs the gym. Just come fishing. <laughs> well, he's still on there. Uh, well, that's not even a fish. Oh, you got a fish. It's a cod. Oh, a cod? You can tell from there? I saw, I saw a fin. <laughs> well, um, we're allowed to keep the cod too, aren't we? Uh, well, not that guy. No? No, that guy's CP too small. Okay. cod there though. Yeah, it's a ling cod. Ling cod. But you got a small one on. So yeah, he might not even be on there. But maybe he's not on. Oh yeah, he's, he's still hanging out. Oh yeah, I can there. see the rod moving. Okay, well we may as well get it in the boat. And... Of course, the, the problem will be I'm trying to get uh, video of Lee landing this fish. We've lost about six that have come off or more. And uh, probably my rod will go before I can get video of him landing his fish. Oh, I see him back there. Here, I can probably zoom in and get a shot. I'm not sure if he's going to be a keeper. A little bit bigger than the uh, little changer. Yeah. Not quite. Not quite big enough. Here, get another shot of this guy. Okay. All right, well, we gotta let him go. Here's another one. Another little guy. Little spring. And we got one on this one too now. We do? Yeah. Oh, you wanna grab that? Yeah. <laughs> another one on there. It's fine in the beginning, it starts sinking in. Uh, well, the cold gets to you after a bit, yeah, yeah, for sure. So you just pull it on, eh? Yeah, I just pull it on there. No, that was an awesome morning, buddy. Yeah, we had a great time. A lot of fish. How many do you think we got? 12 at least, eh, or more? Yeah, well, it must have been pretty close to that. Had a couple of good ones. Yeah. Most of them got off, but still.
Okay, well, I'm getting the fire going for those guys. And uh, I don't know, they're probably not used to the cold like I am. But we'll have to get used to it. Build their own fire in here. Keep warm. So anyway, um, what an awesome day of fishing. Um, boy, we had about 12 on, but of course you're using barbless hooks, so you're bound to lose the majority of them, which is what happened. I think we landed five altogether, and fortunately the one that I landed was a keeper. We were allowed to keep it. It was over the size limit, so we're styling for the first day of fishing. And uh, I don't want you guys to get bored because I come to the island quite a bit fishing and doing these adventures. Um, you know, I remember I used to watch Bob Azumi. I think it was called The Real Fisherman or something. And that's all he did was catch fish. And uh, I'd still watch it every weekend. So hopefully this is going to be an exciting adventure. And uh, yeah, with Bob Azumi, every fish... Oh, what a nice fish. It didn't matter how small, how big, they were all nice fish. So, <laughs> that was a nice fish I got today. All right, well, I got to set my hammock up outside so that uh, the boys have the cabin. And uh, warm it up, like I say. Right on. Okay. I think these trees will work, then. Well, I'll have to pull that picnic table out of the way a bit. stretch. Okay. Well, I'll get it adjusted. I don't really like night vision, as I've said before. I mean, it just makes things, I don't know, just doesn't look right, I don't think. But I'll get this adjusted, and I'm good to go. After a very long journey of about 20 odd hours and some change, we made it. Okay, the boys are here. <laughs> Mr. Evans. Hey. How are you, man? Great. Okay, so we gotta get the names right in here. This must be the chef. Hello, okay. everybody. <laughs> chef Matthew Birby Jones. Matthew Thank you for having me at your casa. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera guy. The guy, Sam. Sam, in, Sam in the space. camera guy. You in know, the flat. It is toasty in here. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, <sighs> I've had the fire going all day. Ever since I got and we got back. that puppy rolling. You're yeah. ready to go. <laughs> oh, this is a good this is a good stove. It's very efficient. Yeah. As soon it's so warm in here. It just drafts it. It's pretty good. It's crazy. It's anyway. Say bon. What a space. I it is late at night. 
and these guys just got here so <laughs> we're ready to roll for fishing tomorrow and uh, we're gonna just set them up and then we can figure out a plan in the morning you right on chef right. he's got some food in store <laughs> well that's good <laughs> let's get cooking everybody <laughs> Hell yeah. I've seen some of your videos and some of them got 12, 13 million views, eh? Yeah, this huh? guy. It's quite surprising. Like how on it, TikTok. How yeah, on TikTok. How does yeah. it feel to yeah. be famous on TikTok? It feels uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird a little bit. You know, let me tell you. When people like recognize you a little bit. We're going to have to, uh, we'll like, have to do the billboard thing downtown here. <laughs> Because you can we get the no billboard for you. We were talking about it. We were talking oh, yeah. about doing that. And then that. you can, because they ask you about food, you do that. Yeah. And then I can have one. I can come up. Yes, yes great. And yes. it'll say, ask me anything about fire. That's yes, literally great. what we're going to do. Yes, yes That's great. perfect. That's, an inc That's what we'll do. We're, we're, we're talking about we're that. Say, yeah, we're, we're going to talk to you about me, it. Yeah, we're we're going to say, like, ask me anything about the wilderness. Like, that, yeah. well, that's there you perfect. Go. Oh, that's oh, my God. So yeah, that's going to be So we'll do it. Oh, that's the collab of the century right here. That's going to be so Legendary. So we're near Vancouver Island. It's just a little ferry right there, but yeah, this uh, Quadra Island. It's a pretty big island. Yeah. It it's is. Vancouver Island. I thought it was gonna be like you know a little like little speck, but <laughs> well, a two-hour ferry to get to Vancouver Island. It's pretty huge. It's pretty massive. And then <laughs> well, it's it's one here. of the biggest islands in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> I, I, I did not, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you excited for some antics? Call that a Canadian Heritage moment, everybody. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you certainly could. All right. What are we dealing with over here? Oh, look at that beauty. Catch of the day? That's the one that we could keep. Wow. Wow. And we caught all kinds of them. Thick boy. So hopefully you guys can lay into some fish. But and That's the, uh, like, a spring salmon. So that's, that's the uh, uh, coho salmon? No, spring. Spring. Okay. They, they call them Chinook. Chino oh, Chinooks have it. Okay. okay. How do you feel when you look at that fish, Burpee? I feel like... That, eating. I feel like eating. That's exactly what I feel like doing. <laughs> All right, it's like we, mowing down. Let's, let's, let's here. do our... Yeah, let's do our... Are you ripping? Is this your... K, is this KFC from Greg? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, just a little KFC rip, eh? Well, quad dry. Yeah, you can't always oh, catch me. Okay, let's do this yeah. intro. Because yeah. everybody else is... Yeah. Awesome. Maybe just a... Uh, are okay, we gonna do a knock? Are we gonna pretend like he's get, just pulling out? Yeah, sure. Flast. Yeah. Then I can see. And you must be the chef. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so Ben, you go first. I'll shoot. I'll hold this. Just give it a knock. <laughs> Act natural. So, I gotta get the names right in here. This must be the chef. Hello, hey. everybody. <laughs> chef Matthew Burby Jones. Matthew Burby Jones. Thank you for having Jones. me at your casa. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera guy. The guy, Sam. Sam. In the, Sam in the, the space. Guy. In oh, the flesh. It is toasty in here. Oh. oh, it's fiddly. So, we're at Barb's place here, and she's gonna take us through the garden a bit. It's interesting, you can grow food just about year round here on Quadra Island. Collect water off of all of these roofs. Uh -huh. Goes down into the gutters. Yeah. And fills these tanks. Oh yeah. And I've got 10 tanks. Okay. I think they're... So you get a lot of water. You get, get a lot, lot of water. Rain. It just rains a lot here, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I water the garden, part of it. Mm -hmm. So there's four here. They're all full, as you can see. And I'm going to just store them full for the winter. Two, uh, I've got four of these small ones. Uh -huh. And another four big ones over here. Oh, yeah, I can see the water level is pretty that much one's full. not quite full. No, it's three quarters. Yeah, but I've diverted the water now uh -huh. from going into the tanks because it's going to freeze. Yeah. And uh, now I've got that a, like a three foot hole full of rocks that it's going into on the bank there. Uh -huh. And another one over here. So 
now that the tanks are basically full, the mm -hmm. water's going to go here for the winter. Great. Then I'll rehook them up again in the spring. Great. Mm -hmm. Do you drain the tanks? No, I'm going to leave them full. Yeah, because it won't freeze as much. Um, even if it does, they're like full. The lids are off so uh -huh. that air can get out. And it won't wreck the tanks. No. But all the pipes have been um, emptied. It's not like you get 30 below. No, but you often get like eight below for uh -huh. maybe a week or two. Mm -hmm. So so the pipes here, they've all been drained. Everything's been drained mm -hmm. for the winter. Right. Uh, I've got 20 vegetable beds and I've uh, shut them down for the winter, most of them. Mm -hmm. They have fertilizer tea that I make in that garbage can there. I've got uh, four garbage cans of fertilizer tea, which has chicken poo, horse poo, seaweed, and comfrey. Mm -hmm. So I put that down, then I put uh, a layer of cardboard, because the worms love cardboard. They and do. And the plastic on top, yeah. Yeah, it holds the moisture and they just like it. Yeah. This is uh, four grapes that put out amazing seedless purple grapes, so many. And across the way I've got a green grape. And I still have a bit of kale, uh, beet green. This is ever-bearing strawberries, but it's pretty much shut down now. This is kohlrabi, and I, I've been plucking one for salads. And what mm. I do is I, I um, grate them, peel them, and then grate them, mm -hmm. and eat them raw on salads. So those are going to go. And this is uh, radicchio, which is a bitter, and it's, it's quite delicious. Go ahead and peel a leaf off. Take a nice inside leaf. Is the inside more sweet? This is cleaner. Mm -hmm. Better, yep. hey? Mm -hmm. But it grows all winter. Hmm. I've been transplanting the beets that were, I've been just thinning them out and putting them in here. We'll see what happens over the winter. Mm -hmm. I planted some late peas. I might get some peas. Depends on what the weather's going to be. You use the chickweed for salad? Yeah, eat the chickweed. Yeah, you got lots of that. It's got lettuces in here and a bit of arugula. And um, this, this greenhouse will hopefully keep the baby lettuces that are planted um, to grow. Mm -hmm. This is all mustards and arugulas, and um, that's what I'm going to be picking today. I'm going to be putting mustard in my spring rolls. Hmm. It's going to be a tangy spring roll. They're going to be nice and spicy. Hmm. Yeah. Taking the little tender leaves. Hmm. And this, hopefully if the weather kind of stays like this, I should be eating this for months now to come. Oh, winter. Well, I hope so. I mean, it will freeze. On the really frosty days, it's frozen. And when I come out to pick, I have to snap it off. But mm -hmm. when I take it in and it thaws, it's just like this. Mm -hmm. This is green curly mustard. And that's a red mustard. And over here, I have beets. And um, I'm just going to leave them in the ground over the winter. And I'll come out and pick them for grating on salads as I need them but I've used them for sauerkraut making. Mm -hmm. Up here I've got kale. This kale will be going all winter. And then I've got baby kale coming in that far bed for the spring. I'm gonna pick a few of the littles. I've got three fruit trees, a, pay, uh, a plum, apple, and cherry. And I don't know, did you come up yesterday? Did you see the orchard? Yeah, I yeah. Did, yeah. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it, it for the garden area. Yeah, lots of garden beds. Lots of food. In this box here, I store potatoes. Down here, these are purple potatoes. I've got a thick layer of potatoes, mm -hmm. all in peat moss, and beets are over here. So you use peat like moss, that, not like sand. The size of that. Yeah, I use peat moss. Get outside, Jen. Come on, stay it's outside. It's easier to get peat moss than sand. Great. 
I store, um, like I've got cannellini beans, chickpeas, and uh, quinoa and rice all here. Mm -hmm. And then in here, this is my Jerusalem artichoke that I just plucked, and this will do me for the winter. And these I just uh, peel and grate on salads. We still got some pears. This is all, this is all sauerkraut in here, and I've got four more jars in the house. And this is all fermented pickles. I've got three gallon jars. I like sauerkraut, but I don't eat a lot of it. Well, I mean, I eat ferments at every meal. That's my canning. So between the canning and the fermenting, Pretty much. And I imagine you would have jam and this is all jams up here. This is ketchup. You make your fruit. own ketchup? Yep. Okay. And I still have tomatoes in the freezer for making tomato sauce. Right. This is chutneys. Hmm. And I don't do pickles anymore, I just ferment them now. So oh, yeah. it's my last jar of pickles. And then I'll show you what I've got in my freezer. And there's four jars still here of sauerkraut. These ones I tried um, using uh, burdock. Burdock? Yeah. I like burdock root. Yeah, so I did this year burdock, sauerkraut, and um, Oregon grape mm -hmm. sauerkraut. Cool. The plants, you're doing well. I am. Now, I, I know you don't eat meat, but if this was my place, I'd be having chickens and turkeys. Okay, this is my seed saving department. I got all of these coriander seeds, so I'm going to cook with those over the winter. Yeah. I got um, uh, dill seed, celery seed, and then I have amaranth, and this is all. Oh, so is vegetables. that the wild amaranth? Uh, no, it's okay. I planted it. Uh, purple pole beans, like it goes on. I've got tons. I got tomatoes and lettuces and. Calendula, here's some nasturtiums. What's mixed that? Lettuce. Mixed lettuces. I've got cucumbers. More mixed lettuce. So you just collect the seeds out of your garden and yep, then plant them the, the seeds, next year. Dry them. It's a big process. Yes. Baskets. I've got baskets of sunflowers that I'm dealing with, but right now I'm just doing this and getting the seeds. And mm -hmm. I plant them last year. I sold like three hundred dollars worth of sunflower plants. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So we're here at the boat launch. Uh, we're getting ready to head out with Lee. Um, but the chef has a joke, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. What do you call a crab that is into S&M? It's called a Dungeness crab. All right. Okay, well, there's Lee down there. Oh we'll get on the boat and uh, away we go. All the life jackets are under the two seats. This guy, he likes knowing where the life jackets are. Oh yeah, he yeah. counted them and in the ferry. Counted them. <laughs> Not lying. <laughs> you even got t-shirts. Oh yeah. Happy December. Right. HNN. You even got t-shirts. We both well, got t-shirts, Greg. <laughs> I'm looking so forward to getting out in the water. We're gonna catch some fish, specifically some salmon. I believe we're aiming for spring salmon. Spring. Spring salmon. Even though it's winter. I want to see the uh, chef catch a fish, but I want to see him clean it and cook it. Can do. Well, there you go. What's what's your plan for the salmon? Plan for the salmon. We're gonna uh, pan fry it, make a beurre blanc. We're gonna use some kale fresh from the garden. And serve it with some nice fire roasted potatoes with some lemon and herbs. What's, yeah, that, what's so that big puppy? Basically, this is your flasher and it tracks the fish. And then uh, you have a leader that goes to a spoon. And we're fishing with a uh, no banana skinny G. Like okay. this. No banana. Fish on. Hopefully, he doesn't get off. I think it may have popped off. Well, you got to reel it in anyway, so just yeah. reel. Even if you think it's it got off, keep reeling. Yeah because it could be just following you and and then there's no time I mean you gotta you gotta bring the lure up anyway to, to, to reset it right so, so you may as well just, just keep reeling just give her the entire time yep don't don't let don't let go yeah. there's your first salmon look at that 
Yeah. Now we want to keep her. Yeah. The chef's got another one on. We don't know if he'll get any keepers, but. He was just like just chilling along with us, you know, just enjoying the ride. <laughs> Release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 12 on, and we only landed five. So, you know. So, you can expect most of them to get off. Expect that, viewers. Yes. Get in there, Chef. Reel like you've never reeled before. Yep. <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> Oh, I feel him. <laughs> come to Papa. <laughs> Ruby is hungry. Come to Chef. Come to Chef. <laughs> so he's a little there too small, go. but yeah. there's your first seven. Get, this guy will be good in a few months from now. Which one? Is, which, 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 which one here? So it's best not to touch him because then what will happen is. Yeah, and it'll it'll descale them too. Okay. So and the oil's getting into the scales is bad for for releasing. Okay. But so I just tried to flick them off on the hook and we bring them in was kind of do a little show. Yeah. Nice. Active fisherman Sam Warsh in the battle. Will he catch the salmon or will he let it go? There, you got one. It's just a little guy, oh. but you got one. Little baby fish. Another one bites the hook. Done, done, done. Oh, yeah, I see. Something oh. tried to get him. Oh, damn. Oh, wow, look at oh, that. There's damage. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's Five. Official counter at five. Five fish on. Alas. Do not catch anything. However, <laughs> Greg Ovens has come through with a catch of the day prior that we're going to be using for our catch and cook and clean. How are you feeling fresh off the water, Matthew Burby Jones? With the man, the myth, the legend, Greg Ovens. I'm feeling good. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of being in open water, but <laughs> when there's fish involved in the game, it makes me want to be there even longer. Give me some information about this fish. What was its tail? Its tail? This fish was not very happy when Greg caught it and pulled it onto the boat. But uh, regardless, we're gonna be happy. There you go. There we go. Okay. Eggs there, done. I would keep the liver. Keep the liver? Awesome. I never know. Might need to survive. Well, I'll tell you, like, in a survival situation, you keep all the organs, right? You cook the heart, the liver, everything. Yes, you wouldn't let any of this go to waste. Oh. What was that? That's flavor. Was that, 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 was, that was the egg. Was that, that the was egg the roast sack, yeah. Hmm. You see, your bones are going to end a little back from here. There. Yeah. Well, what you do is you go from this fin to this fin, and that'll be boneless, right? Know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Know what I mean, Chef? Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying there, Mr. Greg. Out of the way, Finn. You good to cut? Yep. C'est bon. Teacher Greg helping Chef Burpee. Well, it's a together effort. Well, your knives are sharp, at least. I can't understand these people. They, they walk around with dull knives in the bush and stuff. And they walk. What do you plan on doing with that? Hold that little tension there and cut that through. And you're gonna you're gonna probably just cut fillets now for the smoker tomorrow, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I cut a little bit too deep in that. It's like frozen almost a little bit there. It's not frozen. That works. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about losing a bit of meat. That's not a big deal. You're doing a good job. What would what would the Greg Ovens grading be? 
Hold, hold, I hold mean, no honesty. That, I hope, I mean. to me, he did a pretty good job. Couple necks. Well, I see just the odd bone. Actually, that's a good job. <laughs> that's a good job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Pretty good for a chef. <laughs> Vibration. Well, I can't, right can't even feel any any pin bones in there. That's pretty no, strange. That's what I say. It's excellent. I've never had that happen before. <laughs> Mind you, I seen you were nervous. The knife was going like this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to impress Greg. You did yeah, a perfect this is, job. This is, this is the freshest fish I've ever butchered. Would you like to do this side? Or, or, no, do, no, or, you do I it. got it? Okay, sick. Well, what if I screw it up? <laughs> this is like... You can't get anything fresher than this, guys. This is the epitome of farm to table. Except you're not farming. This is like wild to table. This is, this is, it's almost like it's a ketchup cook. I know, right? We're gonna cut it up, sear it off, serve it with some accoutrements, and we'll go from there. Ruby, how does it feel being Greg Evans' personal chef today? It feels like an honor to be amongst such a prolific outdoors figure in this in that, in that culture <laughs> learning a lot from him and i'm appreciative for every step of the way and you don't use the pan you just put it on there yep right on because i want i want to get the uh, the char okay there's still quite a bit of heat there you go <laughs> There's your bush tone. Hell yeah, Greg. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm loving the bamboo, baby. Well, because it's natural. <laughs> That's why we got to use bush materials. Now we're just playing the waiting game. We're just waiting for these potatoes to hurry up and uh, finish their job cooking. Hammer slogan. Yo, hammer slogan. <laughs> hammer slogan. You get one strike. This is my nail. That's your nail. Once your nail's fully in, then you're out. <laughs> we got Cam. We got Ben. I'm, I'm already We losing. got Sam. Well, what if you get one down in one hit? Well, then they're out. When, when yours is the last one standing. Well, this is a soft away. log, I'm going to tell you. Oh, I miss oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you. Oh, you missed Sam's turn. <laughs> so at least every. He's going for me. attainable. Sam's trying to take out the boss. Oh! oh. One piece oh. McDonald's! <laughs> What's it called again? Hammer Schlagen. You could take. Oh. I like this game already. <laughs> <laughs> oh! No. It's yours. Card. That's oh, yours. That's that was way. yours. I'm the f no, that was mine. No, that's no. mine. Oh! <laughs> You're good, man. I've never been oh. so low. <laughs> yeah. Dad. <laughs> this might be the most Canadian game <laughs> oh, ever, uh, ever made. Right? <laughs> and you were a lady. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, it's gone! Just got it's fucking disappeared! It went way too long, man! Thanks for showing us a hillbilly game. Now time for the potatoes. Yeah. It's actually the wood that is... The wood's not poison. Good man for dog shit. Pardon? Make a good dog shit. Oh yeah, even for people like it, yeah. My favorite wildlife uh, bushcraft bed is a moss bed. <laughs> I like, like tarragon, yeah. And what is that now? This is white wine vinegar. Okay. So that's a little bit of acidity. I'm producing about half, but that's, that's what we want to do. With the concentrate of flavors. Then I'm going to add in some cold butter to this. <laughs> A lemon for tang. We're putting our chilled butter into the pan. It's now cooled by a little bit. We don't want it to be too hot because we don't want to uh, burn the butter or uh, have it melt too quickly. We want to have it emulsify. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is in my bank account. The milk fats, the milk solids, I mean, and the, the fat within the, within the, the sauce will begin to emulsify, creating this nice and thick. Delicious sauce. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's good. Right? That smells great. Mm. Uh, you know what? I gotta thank you just for showing up. Oh, man. thank you for having me. Oh, man. This is like. But the smell. <laughs> 
from that was wonderful. Now I don't want the sauce to split from the continued heat in the pan here. So I'm going to pour it off into a secondary vessel. Next up, we're going to let it come to the Oh, I got shocked in the face by, by spark. <laughs> spark, yeah. This right here is a little bit of sea salt, mate. Oh boy. That was meant. It's Way. so thick that I think it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, worthwhile cooking on, on the on the other side now. I think I would flip it, would yeah, you? I agree, yeah. Okay, me and Chef agree. <laughs> Time to flip it. We just added racism guys. He cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> He's used to cooking in the kitchen, man. Fire is my specialty. It's a different animal. It's a different animal and uh I agree, it should be flipped. That's my consensus. So the, the main thing about fish, like flipping anything, is just flip it. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> just do it! Look at that crust right there, you see that crust? That's what we're, lo that's what we're looking for right there, guys. Pretty good, eh? That's real good. We worked on it together and it's ideal. This is the beurre blanc, what is that again? a French sauce of emulsified butter, onions, herbs, Excellent. and love. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Greg! Where'd he go? <laughs> Where's Greg? Right here! Ah. <laughs> I'm just coming with firewood. Okay, I don't want forks, nothing with this. Maybe they'll... <laughs> well, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead. Let me try. We're not going to blame you using a fork. I know, but it's We're just not my here, style. Right? But, okay, well, I'll improvise and use a fork. <laughs> I'm sure it's good, Chef. Mmm. I start with potatoes, but that is good. Try the fish. Let's try this. Hmm. You know what? I think you're a real chef. That is good. Thank you, Greg. You're very welcome. Use my fingers, but you know what? We are out in the wild. Mm-hmm. That sauce is so good, Mom. Holy. Here I was worried that I, because I don't have a small little pot to use, that I wouldn't work, that it wouldn't work out. But you know what? And you did it on a fire shelf. Did it over the fire, nothing burned, which is exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> And this is the first plate, first try. No, no redo plates, no. Nothing like that. <laughs> but this carabiner is really messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a lot. <laughs> Let me try your salad here. <laughs> You're probably just take it off. Yeah. I hate utensils. Mmm-hmm. <laughs> mmm. That is really good, bro. Hey. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. Man, right on. Now, I'm getting rid of that. <laughs> there we go. Fingers. Yeah. Let's dig right into it. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. No problem, Mr. Ovens. <laughs> I'm, glad I could, I'm, I'm glad I could actually make you that a plate. That was great. Have you, take more sauce, please, if you'd like some. I would like more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want more of that on everything. So good, bro. Thank you. No problem. And this is the stuff out of Barbara's Garden, too, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, 
fresh vegetables in December, where in Canada are you going to get that? Post game interview. Everything went well. <laughs> Greg Ovens, you like my food? That means a lot to me. That validates my feelings. <laughs> and I can't wait to see what else we got in store. Well, we're just going to make our brain. I like this brown sugar. This is the best. This is the best stuff to use. You can tell good sugar. When you can almost make a sand castle out of it, it's good stuff. So the, the thing is, you want... Two to about one? Two, well, one about one a third to one. sugar. <clears throat> Again, it's just like how you cook. Eyeball. Just eyeball it, right? And if you really yeah. want to like, like go, go like to the next step, after you mix it all together, make it homogenous, just give it a taste. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and you got to use your hands. That's why I washed, eh? mix it all in same as what you did with your salad yep exactly Just right. god give you hands for a reason now the reason why god gave you hands, god gave you hands for a reason. <laughs> to work with exactly <laughs> i kind of remember that i think it said that in the bible <laughs> so, so this is looking about right the reason why you use salt and sugar is that salt and sugar both draw water and are called desiccants. They make things dry by removing the water through river osmosis. The water, the water goes from where it is and to where it is. And it too. And it preserves it. Salt is a preservative, right? It is. And so is uh, sugar in a sense. It creates a uh, environment where in the bacteria now that I mixed it, doesn't want to live. Try to taste salt. I think it's about right. As long as you didn't just get a sugar piece, but <laughs> no, I think that's about right. Yeah, not too sweet. Yeah, yeah, and not too salty. Mm -hmm. I think that's about right. And basically, dip it. Just cover it. Lost well, a bit there, but. Get our other filet. And just keep it covered. And then the funny thing is, what you're going to see in the morning, mm -hmm. is this is going to be just full of liquid from the salmon. Like Chef says, the moisture is going to come out of it. The salt's going to draw the moisture out. And you'll see what I mean. Hmm. Just coat it all. Make sure it's covered. Skin side, not so important as this side. There, and in the morning, what you're going to see is this whole thing will be full of liquid up to probably there I just put in the fridge overnight and it's good for the smoker and we're good to go voila Perfect. so we're uh, just gonna head out and do a little bit of mushroom foraging I know a lot of you like that um, Vaughn who is Barb's uh, son one of his her sons is gonna show us a spot where you got some pine mushrooms last week so we'll go check it out now i'm here with vaughn collins and yeah we brought these guys out to find some pine mushrooms at my spot it's a little bit late in the season so i got my fingers crossed and we're hoping to come up big So we're all uh, kind of scouring along this lake here and um, looking for some pines. Lots of mushrooms, but I don't know most of these that I'm seeing. So keep looking for pines or chanterelles or ones that I actually know, right?
Finn, how did you get there so fast? All this moss over here is so beautiful. Those works of art in nature. We went far and wide. Look at that thing. Right on the side of the road there. Look at that. We didn't need to go anywhere. Masataki. It looks like it's a big prize beauty. Hundred dollars or more. This is a pine mushroom, everybody. Matsutake. <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna eat it. We climbed all the way up there, but found it by the road. How do you feel yeah. about that? Well, the sometimes your sock is just in your drawer if you're looking for it, and that's the case here with this mushroom. It was just on the side of the road, but we went up this massive cliff right here on the right hand side, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> We climbed that up and over the hill, but it was just right under our nose the entire time. You can sure tell the pines by the, the, the smell. smell. Yeah. Hey? It's a nutty kind of a smell. Yeah. Huh? Like socks. But hey, a couple more of those would be great. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the all day. How are you going to cook that? Yeah. Um, in yeah, wine? It, res it resonates. Yeah, yes. maybe some like wet wine and some butter yeah. and uh, yeah. some, some fresh thyme. Right. Slice it up. Yeah. Maybe as long as you have time a, for it. Maybe they can make a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll build the smoker out of the sword ferns. All we need is a little frame and a little rack for the fish. And then alder is good smoke wood. Mm. <laughs> well, I see some remnants of some mushrooms up here already, but uh, this is looking up for us, so it's looking promising. Oh, I'm sure there's a couple of good ones right here. There's one little guy. Yeah, I think so. Some of them are hard to get off, though. That's fresh. That is that beautiful. There will be blood. Oysters for our seafood chowder. These guys are eating them raw. I don't like doing that. Chef, are you gonna eat one raw? I'll take half of this one. Oh That's a little We're bigger. Split an oyster. We'll do it like uh, Lady in the Tramp style. <laughs> <laughs> really put aphrodisiac to the name of the oyster. <laughs> you guys gonna Lady in Tramp that thing? <laughs> Splitting an oyster seems insane. But you can get the chunky and then I'll get the other end. <laughs> Especially when there's so many in yeah, here. Just, I mean. just take the whole thing. <laughs> Some of them are just lying around. Nice. Oh, oh. oh, I can go. Uh, I got uh, that one. Okay. Beautiful. Burpee, you, you there we go. That's a nice fresh oyster. That's a little, a little, bit, a little bit of a crunchy crunchies on the side of it. <laughs> Smells like gas. I'll try eating this one raw. Yeah, you will. Here, yeah. 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 Okay, we gotta just try to open it up. That's a nice big one. See, that's the kind of I like. That's a chunky monkey. Look at the size of that thing. Look at the size of that thing. Greg, how long, how how old do you think this oyster is here? I don't know, man. I don't know how quick they grow. To be honest. I think it takes a couple of years. Old growth oyster for sure. Right. Yeah, look at the size of that guy. It's alive though, it's moving. Oh well. <laughs> sure ain't dead. No, I'm just trying to clean the shell off and just scooping 
Scoop. <laughs> that's a go. big boy. And yeah, that's what I'm after. You can if, if, if they're big enough too, you can, you can treat that, that the abductor muscle like a scallop, because that's what the scallop is—one is one big abductor muscle. Trying to get all the shell off, but yeah. Look at that. Okay, that's a that's a nice one. Protein. Mm hmm I still prefer them cooked. <laughs> yeah. You want the rest of that? I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get some oysters on the fire here. Chef's gonna do it his way tomorrow, but I just I just feel like having them some the way that I like to do them. I just throw them on the fire till the shell opens and they're usually done. So in the flames, you can put them right in the flames, doesn't matter, because look at the size of that one. Jeez. One just squirted me. <laughs> popped early. <laughs> Sprayed me right all over. Well, actually, the shells do blow up, too, so watch your eyes and stuff. Okay, and then we just wait for the shells to open. It's probably enough on there for now. They're just going to pop when they're ready to go, eh? They'll just open up, yep. These ones are done. The sooner we get them off the fire, oh, baby. the safer it will be. <laughs> That's the way I like them. Yeah. It really is. Okay, there you go, buddy. We're not going to throw these shells in the fire. I made a mistake and threw one in. That's really hot. It's warm. Sorry, I put down a little bit. Just let it cool a bit. Yeah. Oh, it's smoky. Right. Yeah, you can smell the smoke. It smells like yeah. the brininess of it, man. Like, I was trying to smell a piece of the fresh one just just, uh, just just a couple seconds ago. And that was, uh, that was fresh, man. <laughs> Let's go. Buon appetito. That shit's hot like Diwali. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Greg. Isn't that good? That is so good. Oh man, it's, it's like a muscle flavored almost, but like. But you can almost taste the smoke even. You can. Because for some reason, when you do them on a fire, even for a short time like that, when the shell opens, the smoke gets in there and it's almost like a smoked oyster. Mm -hmm. Just that quick a little bit. Like a nice light smoke. Yeah. That's the size that I like. Oh yeah. That's oh, a big boy. That. Hey. Well, you actually like that, right, Chef? I do. This looks delicious. That, 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 that is what I prefer now, as the cooked oyster than the raw oyster. Oh my god, look at that. He's converted. <laughs> That's beautiful. Morning. So, we had a pretty good day yesterday. We uh, got those oysters. We got a couple of pine mushrooms even though they're pretty much finished uh, we're having a lot of fun here on the island and uh, the salmon fishing it's been good so far we got a lot to come but you know I was showing uh, Barb's garden and how she preserves all her own food she's basically self-sufficient here on Quadra Island she's got stuff out of the garden year-round and everything's set up properly. And you know, I was thinking that also, the, the thing is about here on the island, like if I had to choose a place to survive a winter, living off the land, uh, plants in the bush, this would be the place to do it in Canada. You know, back at home, the plants are all dead. Everything's frozen and uh, here, everything is green, and they, the plants even stay green all winter. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of some of the wild plants, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Um, it's just, this would be the place to survive a winter. Okay, so I am going to show you uh, some blackberries. These are cut leaf evergreen 
blackberries. And they're a little different than the Himalayan, which are here as well. But I just want to show you that even though it's December, basically, in a day or so, there's a lot of unripe berries on the bush that'd still be edible, still get your minerals, your vitamins, especially C. And they're here year round, even though they're gonna be a little sour. There's tons of them that didn't ripen during the summer. And uh, here we are, like I say, in the winter, and these berries are still on the bush, lots of them. So this is cut leaf evergreen, or I mean blackberry, I'll show you. So that's what the leaves look like. You can see how jagged they are. And uh, look down in here, look at all the berries. Everywhere you look, there's berries on them. Like I say, survival food, they're kind of sour. But look at all the berries that, are, that didn't ripen. In December, we have all these berries. And the entire bush is just full of these berries everywhere you go. Every part of this blackberry has berries everywhere. Tucked in here, we have a thistle. Roots would still be good on that. And it'd still be edible in December. More over here. And there's a really big thistle. You can see there. And here we have a big mullen, which would still be good for tea all winter. Still has flowers on it in December. More mullen. More mullen. So when you've got an area like here on Quadra Island or any of the islands along the coast here, uh, Vancouver Island, the mainland, uh, these plants are out year round. So what a perfect spot if you wanted to do a survival challenge in the winter and you'd still have all these things that you could rely on. It's just fantastic. I'm going to show you a few more plants that I've noticed that are still usable even this time of year. And then down in here, we've got sheep sorrel, which will probably stay green all year. The, uh, the sheep sorrel, this time of year, is not going to taste as good as in the summer. But in a survival situation, it's not what it tastes like. It's not, it's past its prime doesn't really have the lemony flavor that it usually would in the summer. But it's still full of vitamin C, still got the minerals. Survival's not about even enjoying sometimes the food you're eating. It's about getting the nutrients you need. Okay, so... Um, we got a couple of pine mushrooms for the boys to try. And um, other than that, we got to build a bushcraft smoker again to do that salmon that I've got on the brine in the fridge. I'm gonna make a different uh, type of smoker so it won't be the same materials. We're gonna use the sword fern, make a tripod and drape it with sword fern. So it's a different type of smoker. 
I think we're going to go out at low tide in the dark. We have to go in the dark because low tide is around 8, 9 o'clock tonight and try to get some mussels because we would like to make a really good seafood chowder. Uh, since we got the chef here, I'd like to uh, get him to do it. We'll just get all the ingredients. We're going to have to buy some at the store. But as far as crab, oysters, whatever we can get ourselves, um, it's just, man, I just love seafood chowder when it's full of lobster and crab and scallops and prawns and so. And uh, Lee gave me some prawns. So we're going to get the ingredients together and then tomorrow hopefully make a seafood chowder. Big pot of it because it won't go far. Right on. But we'll get this uh, smoker going and get our salmon going. This saw was just hanging up on the shed. <laughs> Pretty dull, I'll get my saw. Well, I cannot find my, my saw in the truck. I might not have brought it. Um, so, we just have to deal with this one. I'll get this one, and uh, get this. It's just kind of sticks in the wood, eh? It's not very sharp. You want to push down on that end? You got it. Just take the pressure off this. Tension maybe. on that bad boy. Yeah. We'll get it. It's just slow. It's quite bendy. It's so flexible. You, and then it jams. You can't push it. So I almost got to pull it through. It'll. We'll do it. Yeah, you just can't push it. I'm three quarters away. Nice. There it goes. It's quite a flexible saw. Oh, it's just really bad. And it's very dull. There we go. Okay, that'll do one pull. I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy. That'll work too. So there's two, and it's high enough. Two. That's look pretty, pretty darn decent. That should do it. And then just a couple of cross braces. They don't, they don't have to hold much weight. You can use almost anything. So basically, Chef and I are building this smoker, and we're just uh, going to make a tripod, and then we're going to put a rack and cover it with sword fern. So I haven't made one like this before, so even though I've made smokers, it's uh, not the same as the other ones. Actually, I think I'll go under here. Chef has never made a smoker. Chef's never made a not. smoker. But I have actually made a teepee. So, yeah. what we're doing right now is we're just lashing this together. We're yeah. going to tie it nice and tight. Tight like a tiger. Good enough. Okay, so that should hold. It's not like they, the fillets weigh a ton. Only a couple of pounds or something. We'll trim these off so they don't melt in the fire. Yep. Last thing we want is that Smell synthetic of, smoke. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, these will be high enough. Mm. That, but we'll cut this stuff off, right? That should work. Look at that coming together. Mm -hmm. Look at that coming together. It is. Now, the only thing is. I think I'm going to put a stick out here because we're going to have trouble 
in here with our fillets, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they could hang over, but I think I'll take advantage of uh, our length. And then we just put a couple of cross members. That's all we need, right? Now, when we do place the fish onto the rack here, yeah. are we going to be putting them uh, skin side down? or Yeah. Or, 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 uh, well, I, you know, and we'll flip down. it, though, too. Yeah, right? yeah. Either start it off, depending on the heat, but we'll flip it. Cool. Let's cut this one into two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's our main frame. Certainly nothing fancy. Doesn't have to be. And then when we get it covered, it'll look like a smoker when we get our, our uh, greens on it. Chef, tell the people what you're gonna be doing with this smoked salmon. Smoked salmon? Eggs Benedict. Smoked salmon, eggs Benedict, everybody. Yeah, nice. A little spruce well, I'm vinegar looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's a good heat right there. Okay. Just about done, except for our collecting of the ferns. Okay, now we get ferns. It's fern, fern time. time. Yeah, the longer the better, eh? You got it. <laughs> that that uh, evened the platform quite a bit by stretching that one leg. Ferns. I'm going to go and collect some too. Yeah. The bigger the better. So, I mean, those will work, but the but bigger the better. <laughs> Think <laughs> bigger, Burpee. Those will work, but you're bigger, unimpressed. Bigger, better, studio. <laughs> Burpee, your zoom mic's running, right? Yeah. I love that. I think I see some pretty big ones over here. Okay, Burpee, I'm going to come if you want a fern journey. <laughs> a ferny. Yeah. Well, look at the size of this fern. Long as my arm. Yeah, the longer the better, eh? You got it. really good with the ferns. Yes, it will. Okay, so since he got some ferns, we can just show everybody what we're going to be up to. Now, there is a trick to, you don't put your ferns this way because it's not, the smoke will just come through like in a uh, Venetian blind. You put them this way and then when you layer them, it covers it far better. So now, you get a whole bunch. You can tie a, a bunch of them together. And I'll go get some more. We basically just make sure it doesn't matter for now that we have them all the same direction. Like don't flip one up this way. Have them all the same direction and then we just tie a bunch together because we can spread them out like a fan once we have like a couple of groups of them. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to. How many to a bunch? Um, I would say about six eight something like that okay. we'll do two or three bundles of them cool and then we'll just put them around they're going to hang down to about here which will funnel our smoke mm -hmm. 
and we don't put it too close to the fire because we don't want too much heat. Yeah. We try to figure out our heat. You see, right about there feels like about 110. That's about what we want, or 100. Like oh, yeah. One, yeah. Know? So this is about as close as we want it to the fire. And then I'll show you we're going to figure out a way to funnel the smoke into our smoker. Okay. the key? So, you need smoke for a smoker. You do. So yeah, just tie a bunch together. Okay. Now we'll get some ferns. Okay, that's probably good for now. We'll start with those. There's no point cutting more than we need. And that's kind of what we want. We'll need more ferns yet. Yeah, let's get back in it. Just open up your uh, thing and see if it's sent through on your end. Oh, oh it fell. Chef took a tumble. <laughs> I took a you gnarly okay? tumble yesterday. Yeah, well, you're going to have to get your own blooper reel. <laughs> Fall a couple more times, you might just have a blooper reel. So if you just want to keep tying those together like you did, yep. I'm going to get another batch as well. <coughs> Baby, how are you feeling after you tumble? Sometimes you fall, but it's about how you get back up. That's what, that's what matters, you know? Never give up. These are nice big ones. Mm -hmm. Big truck, eh? Mm -hmm. You know what I find sometimes? This is kind of interesting too. I can be out way in the bush at a lake that I've never seen people and as soon as I start running the camera somebody will show up. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> They're just trying to ruin your audio, Greg. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay, we'll put these on and then that might almost do it. Seems like a pretty good all. Quite plentiful. Enough? Yeah, let's get the fish going. Yeah. I can just finish these couple spots I don't like and yeah. Burpee, so you're gonna do some sort of put you're gonna rinse them? I'll rinse the fish, yeah. We're just gonna rinse our fish off, get rid of the extra cure, and uh bring it outside. You can see all the moisture that's been removed from the fish. This is step one of preserving your fish protein. You can see that nice rich orange hue on the fish. This right here, you can just eat it by itself. Uh, it's, it's been cured, it's nice and firm. And I think we're ready to get our fish in there. Amazing. So then we can figure out where we might be losing smoke and we can add pieces here and there. So right on. Okay, we'll get our fish. Putting the fish on. Hey buddy. What's a good dog? I sent a little video to my brother of what you're doing. He's oh, okay. Okay, well here's Chef with the goods. Yep. So, let's get this one out of the way for now. And you can put the fleas in there then. Just get them in there. 
it'll hold them, I'm sure. Oh, one little pin bone sticking out there. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't want that. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh yeah. So we can buddy. rotate them in a bit. So which wood are we using here today, Greg? We are using alder. Alder wood. Which is a good smoking wood. How would you say it? Like the like the the profile, the flavor is from alder wood. Well, you know, if you go to Canadian Tire to buy smoke chips, I mean, you've got apple and cherry, but alder is a big one. Mm. People use it a lot for smoking. Nice. I personally have never had that before or used it before, so. It's gonna be a big treat for me. Yeah. Yeah. So our bushcraft smoker is uh, doing good. Just trying to get a little more smoke to come through it without burning the leaves off. So. This is the thing when you're smoking, you have to babysit. And mm -hmm. especially with a bushcraft smoker because it's not like buying one of those smoke air, smokers that's automatic and all that, you know. Right. It does take quite a bit of uh, effort, like just to look after it is the main thing. So. I would like it if that this camera, it's, it's trippy, so you... Smoker is working just right. You can see the smoke coming out of the top of it. And uh, pretty happy with the way it worked, even though it's a simple design. It's just a matter of keeping enough smoke in there to do your stuff. We had some uh, oysters, man, I, I have trouble staying out of the smoked oysters as well. It's, uh, the food has been awesome. The cook really knows what he's doing, the chef. And uh, we're going to do a chicken on the fire tonight, so that should be awesome as well. Fish is almost done. I'm not going to do it overnight. We tried a piece and you can taste the perfect smoked amount and ah, that fish is just awesome. He's going to do uh, eggs benedict with some of the fish tomorrow. Excellent food. Just to add a little bit of extra flavor to, I want to make a little pine mushroom salad with some of the zucchini preserve, some fresh Jerusalem artichokes as well as some roasted beets. I'm going to smoke these mushrooms and then I'm going to cut them up and add them to the salad. So we collected the spruce and you're going to do what with it? I'm going to use the spruce as a bed underneath the chicken so that the flavor of the, of the spruce as it burns will go up and through it into the chicken and like somewhat smoke it a little bit and get that flavor of the, of the, of the spruce. So you're going to yeah. put the spruce on the grill? On the grill and then... And the chicken on, on top. the spruce. Okay. Yes. Right. And also, I'm going to put some oregano, thyme, and rosemary on top of the spruce as well, mm -hmm. so that all those flavors will come up into the chicken. Is this the first time you've smoked with spruce? First time, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here we have our massive pie mushroom the size of my face, courtesy of the Wendell family and Mr. Vaughn himself, the avid billy goat of the mountains up here. All right. We're going to go ahead and remove... Then we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half. And we're gonna cut it into thicker pieces here because we're gonna, we wanna get a nice good sear on them. So let's cut it into the little like triangles or something like that. We're gonna cut them, cut them into fun shapes. Look how thick that is, guys. That's good surface area for when we sear it onto the heat. Gonna get nice and brown and caramelized. 
and it's gonna taste a lot different. And I'm looking forward to see how different the flavor is gonna be. We're gonna wrap up this uh, wonderful, wonderful, massive beat the size of the length of my head, and almost my entire forearm, which is kind of cool. <laughs> it smells great. <laughs> No salt, no oil. We'll add that after when we make the salad. <laughs> With such confidence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I yes. like it. Yes, we will. Explain to All me right. your methodology behind that. Uh, we'll just season it after. You know, it's a, there's more, it's more of a chance of the oil inside burning from the high heat of the, of the flames there. So, yeah. Okay. I have our pine mushrooms that have been smoked. They have a wonderful. Aroma tube, nice smoky piney aroma. Anybody want to try a piece of this? Try a little piece of it. <laughs> it's big or smaller? Oh, uh, that's fine. It's, it's not an oyster, I could eat it. Mm. It's really good. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's pretty good. We have some Drew some artichokes. We are going to uh, julienne these into a nice julienne. Add them to our salad and we can have them just raw as it is. Just gotta wait for this for, for, for this beat to cook so then we can uh, get the chicken on. When the chicken is about 80% or 90% of the way done, then we're gonna toss our cast iron pan on the heat, get it warm, get it hot. And we're gonna go ahead and toss in our mushrooms and some garlic scape with some butter and some canola oil. Yeah. I like how you're doing multiple things with it. Mm. It's all about layering your flavor. Like, I, 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 was, I was a very avid Lego kid. Building flavor profiles and building flavor is exactly what I've done with Lego. Now I'm doing with mushrooms. <laughs> Matthew Mycelium. Burpee, how do you feel about night cooking? Oh, it's like night skiing. <laughs> 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 Funny games. So you get a post you can't see. <laughs> but everything is lit right now. One of the cameras. I'm lit. Y'all are lit. Fire's lit. Fire's lit. What are we working? It's tahini, lemon juice, salt, water. Hmm. Making a salad sauce. This is gonna be for our charred kale. Hmm. Uh-huh. I didn't want to dip my fingers in it. Oh, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. That's a good job. Good flavor? Yeah. Mm hmm Superb. Let me tell you on that. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Strong people like to speak like they're pirates. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Run around trying to act like Jack Sparrow? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, hi, I'm a Jack Sparrow. I'm going to walk like a funny man. I've been sailing for so long. I have my sea legs, which means I can't walk properly on the on shore. <laughs> That's not the accent. No, this is my inside. I'm in the forest cooking my food dogs. There we go. I kind of think that the spruce is going to burn up quick on the fire. Should I wet it? I don't think it'll make a difference. I think I it's, hear you. it's all looking good. Oh yeah. Burpee. Can I get a quick run back of everything that's in here? Just bang it out. Parsley, paprika, garlic salt, olive oil, more garlic, <laughs> pepper, <laughs> and love. Now we're going to cut our chicken down the back and go ahead and toss this marinade for the next half hour or so and put it onto the grill. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? It's I. <laughs> What's the difference in chicken and Ooh. Okay. We just went ahead and uh, just charred off some of our kale for our charred kale and uh, tahini salad. Just gonna take it off for our heel. Look at that, nice and somewhat steamed, nice and crispy on the edges. 
give it a try here. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Here's our tahini. Our dress. Looks like a bechamel, which is what we're looking for. Thick, tangy, lemony. Excellent. We're gonna chop. into our pan because we don't have any bowls. And when it comes time to serve, we're gonna go ahead and just pour of that tahini dressing over that kale because we don't want to get it soggy prior to serving. So, no way. Okay. Kind of a little taste test. <clears throat> Doing a little kale dip. Ooh. Kale dip. Hell yeah. Good well, job. That seems the way to do it. Just char it on the fire quick. So. Yeah. What are you thinking, Chef? What's the next stage? defeated by a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. That won't reach yeah. anyways. Yeah. To give a... Uh, here, here, here. To give her a... Oh yeah. yeah. That, that, that would work probably. Yeah. 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 yeah, now we're in that nice yeah. heat range, I think. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest too. And what the Just a little... Just a bit too hot. There. There we go. Lots of smoke getting to her, though. Oh, yeah. Burpee? Yeah. Uh, How are we feeling? <laughs> well, <laughs> do, 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 do. through the trial and error, we have adjusted the, light, the, 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 the level of the chicken. We've removed one of the logs so that we don't have as much heat that's so intense with burning the herbs that are supposed to, that are supposed to lightly smoke up. So the bottom of this is probably nice and black, like my dad, but... <laughs> You know that the top of it, the top of it is where we're gonna be eating. So that's so when we flip this, yes. everything will be just fine. <laughs> I agree with you too because this is where our meat is. This hasn't been ruined. If it's charcoal on the inside of the rib cage, who cares? Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> you just you're just learning how the fire works, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. You're not used to cooking on a fire as much, right? I'm not. No. We're all doing this together, too. Oh, yeah. For sure. But that's a better height, I think, too. Those stubs came together quick. That was pretty intense heat down there. That's not bad. It's up to the whole team. We'll regulate the heat better next time, Chef. I'm Regulators. sorry. Regulators! <laughs> Greg, I really like how you're letting Burpee learn from, uh, you know, just doing it. It's good. The best teacher is learning, like, hands-on. Mm-hmm. I just like how quick we all were. We're like, this is an idea, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all just like we acted, and it all happened like it was really fluid. Like it was nice. Like I'm just new to the team and stuff here, but that was tight. You should light like bring your light real close to this. That did come together really fast. Yeah. Oh okay. shit! It's still actually it's still green. The underside well, is good. actually that's not even charred, so that's really nice to see. Yeah, Burpee, how are you feeling now? I'm so happy! <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I was, what I was hoping was going to happen. Ouch! <laughs> Not today. Now we're going to let these cool down here. And by the time they're cool, we're going to put them into our salad. Mix it up. And it's go time, baby. <laughs> hmm. Is this on your chest? <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was legendary. <laughs> I don't know how you knew, but you knew. <laughs> mm.
Now, this right here, if you guys can smell it, I'll waft it to your area in your general <laughs> direction. Because, you know, the new, the new invention of the smell vision is a thing now, if you haven't heard about that. This is Farbright's Zucchini Relish. Now, relish in the fact that this tastes so good. Let's come back here. We'll put maybe uh, two spoons of this because the flavor goes a long way. Yeah, baby. For a little taste test. So of course, we'll try and get a little bit of everything in here, all in one bite. Oh man. Yeah. That's it right there. That smokiness and that pineness and the mushroom comes in on the last second, but the first thing you taste is the sweetness and the acidity and the sugar and the beets. It may, maybe I can toss in a little bit more of Barbara's wonderful. Right? That was good. This is delicious. You mean they, if you mean they, if you can make it for fifty days? Yes. I see. Because there was no food. Yeah. Yes, and then part of that problem was the woman that won it, won he had won the thing. Nobody else stuck around very long. So she just. There was just no food. She was just she determined. Was just yeah. Yeah. She had to start. You know, yeah. Oh no, she went. Yeah. They, well, they're all city people. They're all yeah. in New York, and yeah. they don't. Yeah, they wouldn't know. They have no no yeah. clue. I'm going to go ahead and let this infuse now. Let the flavors meld, come together, become a homogenous flavor rainbow. <laughs> yeah, I can flip the bird for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a me joke. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do a little uh, cut test here. This looks amazing. How juicy that is. That's perfect. That's perfect right there, baby. Yep. All right. I agree. I've never seen chicken look like that. Yeah, no, not <laughs> Looks delish. Chicken to chicken to look. <laughs> <laughs> He's used to them walking around pecking the ground. <laughs> 100 degrees Celsius, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're looking for something above that. As we cook, the heat's going to continue to rise above 212. Looking for a nice hot high sear. We're gonna sear our mushrooms and go from there. That looks like foie gras. It's a, it's a texture of foie gras. Escape into the pan we go. A lot of garlic steak. Maybe some of the steak. A lot of food fights going on. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> so, all of the components for our meal has have now been completed. Now I'm gonna go and head and ask Greg, which cut of chicken would he like to enjoy? Hey Greg. Yeah. Which cut of chicken would you like to enjoy tonight? Which what? Which cut would you like? I want a little bit of breast and a little bit of thigh. Would you like the wing? <laughs> There's not much on it. <laughs> That's true. A <laughs> little bit of breast, a little bit of thigh. Here we go. A little bit of thigh, a little bit of breast, yes. Thank you.
that's done perfect. There's no doubt. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing here? That's too small. Let's I to need more meat. <laughs> Let's get in that thigh right there. Maybe a tad on the raw side. Yeah. Tad on the yeah. raw, a little bit, a little bit underdone there, a little bit. This meat here on the top is done. That interior. See what I mean? How a chicken can mm -hmm. fool you? It's, I know it's so hard. Even chicken at home. on a fire can be hard. Even at home, though, like it's, it's, it's I would, I would say this right here is done. This right here, the wing. Right yeah, wing. that's probably good. But you know what? This breast meat is all good. The breast meat is done. We can always it's put just some uh, back on for a bit if we have to. This, this might just be... I'm, I'm, let me Close to the bone, it might be yeah. undercooked. <laughs> yeah, so those legs got to go back onto the fire. <laughs> They're a little bit already done, but you know what? I don't have a thermometer, so you know what? Like the good news is, I have the pieces that are already <laughs> cooked. Precisely. So you guys will have to wait longer. <laughs> but yeah, these thighs aren't quite done, and it's usually the thighs yeah. or chicken. Because of all the bone that's there. It, it's just always the thighs. It seems. Tell me when we want to stop. Oh, that's good. That's good? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Let's, let's not overdo it right now. Perfect. Now, and we'll get some mushies and some garlic scape that's kay. being warmed by the fire. Yeah, I was kind of wondering about the chicken a little bit. Make sure everybody gets enough. Because I've eaten lots of pines. I had them not long ago, so that's good. That's good. Very good. The humble man himself. And then the, the well, kale? Oh no, that's not what's good. As far as pines go, I eat them all the time. Yeah. These folks have never had them. Neither have I. So, so there you go. Let's leave it to people that haven't had pines. Sherry is caring. There you go. It's true. Perfect. What else we got? The salad? Maybe I should eat this first and then make... Gotta use sticks in the bush. What did you think it was gonna be? You thought he was gonna pick up a spoon, viewers? Try to complicate my life with implements and utensils. Okay, so we are here at Rebecca's bit and we're gonna I'm gonna take the chef out in the zodiac we're gonna set a prawn trap and a crab trap and see how we do because we want to make this uh, seafood chowder tomorrow so we got to get some traps in and hopefully catch as much stuff as we can for this chowder we'll probably have to buy obviously some scalps lobster which aren't here and uh, make up a really good seafood chowder we gotta bring this with us because the one valve is broken, so I gotta leave this hooked up or it leaks. Okay. Once in a while, we just gotta push, put it on. Perfect. It's not a big deal. That's the only problem is trying to get the valve to shut off seems to be an issue sometimes. If you're on that side, And then basically this has got to go right up front, but we got to get it past here first. Now let's try to slip, there we go. Okay, I think that's it for that. Yes, this, this goes next. This goes in here. Let's try to get it. Go back a bit. Back this way? Yeah. yeah. So this, we slide back now. Now I can at least stand in here. I just leave this hooked up. Oh, okay. And if it goes low on us, we just fill it. 
just see if we can get it in this lip where it's supposed to go. Yeah, it's hooked on there for sure. We almost got her. There, it's done. Now we're ready to go and have a nap. Here we are, Rebecca's Fish, Quadra Island. If you look over to the right, you will now see a prawn trap as well as a crab trap. Out here, we're going to be going a little bit into the water, maybe a little bit far into the water, and dropping these traps. We have some chum that we're going to put into it from the salmon that we caught a couple of days prior. And we're going to go out there and see what we can catch. We'll put the back in first, eh? Okay, slide it in. It's good, now we'll put the stuff in. We might have to just take the crab trap. We also already have prawns, but uh... Yes, that's right. I think we'll just take the crab trap. We don't have room for everything. So as soon as I get in, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be touching the ground, so... Yeah, I know. What's that for? Oh! Vaughn, you're a gem, baby! Okay, come on in. Somebody might have to push us a bit. Yeah. And we're off. Bon voyage. After we, we, we drop the trap, how long should we, should we leave it down for? Overnight. Overnight? Okay, okay. Yeah. Stay out of the water. So, Chef and I are heading out to set the crab trap. Tomorrow is, uh, like I say, seafood chowder day. I'm um, looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, right on. And uh, we're going to put everything in today, eh, Chef. It's my first time ever going trapping for crab or any kind of seafood. Yep. Um, have all my faith put into Greg. <laughs> right on. I mean, it's up to you how we want to make this chowder. Like, We'll, just, we'll stick it in with like a, a little bit of like roux, some flour and butter. Yeah. We'll, we'll just cook the potatoes and with the garlic and the baby with that. Yeah. And we'll add the milk. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Let's whisk, 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 and then we'll just keep that in the rest of the milk, and then... Do you want to richen it up with a little bit of evaporated milk, or...? We can try that, yeah. I've never tried that. I've never, never tried, tried it before, it? no. So we, so we, can, we can totally do that. It's usually what I use in, a, in like, a chowder. Okay. So like, more, it just more makes it a rich, creamy, you know. Oh, yeah. I like it. We'll do that. Yep. With the salt. Maybe we can get some white pepper or black pepper. It doesn't matter to me. Yep. And then... Finish it off with the, with the, with the seafood. I, I like the last 10 minutes of it because the potatoes will, cook, will take a long time to cook. Well, the seafood will already be cooked and then you just let it simmer low for a little bit with let all the flavors come out of the yeah. seafood, right? Yeah. So we have what's left of our salmon to throw in here. And, uh, put that down in there. Probably just throw some in sides. This isn't going to stay in there very good. So. I don't think we need it all. I think that's good. You know, I gotta make Those sure. crabs are going to have, have, are gonna be having a feast. They are, for sure. Okay. Oh, better though. Oh yeah. Okay, well that's all right. Powered off. I don't know if we even want to fish, do we? My hands getting kind of kind of frigid. <laughs> I'm getting a little wet and cold. Can you hold this bucket? You got it. And uh, so we don't lose it, because if it's deeper than what our bucket is, then we have to add line. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose the bucket, and we can't retrieve our trap. All right. Got to be getting there. I don't know. I just hope we have a line on here. As it looks like this is the last run. If we don't. Uh oh. That's no. Can you unravel that? Yeah, I'll help. And we both make sure we just don't drop it. Come on, hit the bottom, man. Hit the bottom. Deeper than we think. Yeah. Might drop right off, right at shore. Who knows? It yeah. We don't have enough rope. I would like to just get to shore because I'm getting a little chilled. 
and then you'd have to lift up a bit so it, it doesn't rip it out of your hand if it gets caught on a rock or you know I just don't know why we can't hit bottom they're certainly not moving very fast even full bore okay I can see the bottom here it's got to be good here okay I got it oh yeah okay we're on bottom okay we hit bottom yeah we're on bottom I'm just gonna pull it up a bit and then I think we better get on the shore I agree yeah we're, we're on bottom we're moving like a foot a second here yeah I know okay we can tie this on <laughs> We couldn't hit bottom. It must be 300 feet deep where we were. It's just drifting us, eh? We had, tr I mean, it was like even at full speed on the motor, we weren't going anywhere hardly. We don't want to end way up out there. Smoke seven bays. Let's get going, folks. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, first up for our dish we're making right now is that we're gonna make some hash brown potatoes. Got some wonderful potatoes from Barbara Mendel. Boil them, get them nice and soft. Fry them off in the pan, a little bit of salt. C'est fini. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna make our spruce vinegar with our nice spruce that we harvested. With some white wine vinegar, we're gonna infuse that together. Then we're gonna make our Spruce vinegar hollandaise and my poached them eggs. Get some smoked salmon that we made prior to this. Put it all together. Smoked salmon bennies. <laughs> Let's get going, folks. Look <laughs> at the color of those potatoes. Mmm. Smells so earthen. We will let those potatoes cook until they're done. No matter set time because each, each potato is different. I cut them into smaller cubes. So maybe I'll just say wild guess a shot in the dark here. When it comes to the boil, 15 minutes on five. And then we'll see how it is. Next up, I'm <laughs> gonna go ahead and make our spruce vinegar. So here we have our spruce. I'm just gonna cut it up into, into sizable chunks, put it through a pot. With a couple of glug glugs of the white wine vinegar, and let that infuse over a nice medium heat. How much is a glug glug? You know, when it makes the glugging noise, a glug is one glug, and two glugs is two glugs. <laughs> so, a few glug glugs. <laughs> now, for a few glug glugs of the white wine vinegar, thanks to Ponty. Pond to Ponty, use it whenever you want to. <laughs> That was more than a few glug glugs. Yeah, we're glugging, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go like two feet higher? <laughs> nice. Greg, any thoughts about what's going on here? Oh, I just watch and I'm just uh, interested to try some of these things when we get back to camp. Now that we have our scum on the top of here, we're going to skim it off with our spoon. I'll put the weight again. <laughs> we're gonna bring this vinegar to a boil. As soon as, as soon as it comes to a boil, then we're gonna just turn it off, take it off the heat, and let it cool down. We don't want it too hot for the uh, hollandaise, because then it will. Uh, hey, buddy. Because then it will uh, cook our eggs, and we don't want to scramble them with too much of the heat. Look at that orange hue. That is a wonderful mm. looking egg. It's so beautiful. Look at that, right? Yeah. 
firm fresh. But did you know that they can all enhance the color of the egg yolk with marigolds or yes, peppers? Yes, I did know that. Yeah. Hmm. Fun fact, eh? Would you look at that, Matt Feed the marigolds. Uh -huh. uh, now it's, I'm going to go grab my clarified butter, which is still not really fully clarified, but we'll see if we can make it work. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I'm going to add in our acid, which is lemon juice too, as well as our spruce vinegar. It's a nice cozy vibe tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Laid back. Yeah, super laid back. A little pressure. Yeah. I like my hollandaise sauce to be more on the acidic side, so it has the contrast mm -hmm. with the richness of the egg and of the fattiness of the salmon. Mm. Okay, what's the in the jar? In the jar, I do. This looks delicious. That, 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 that is what I butter. prefer now. As the now I tried clarifying it, but the milk solids are still staying in, in suspension. So I probably could have heated it a little more, but I'll see if I can make it work anyway. You gonna use the whole thing? Uh, maybe like half. You know, we let it cook a little longer. Do you add anything else to this though? Nope. nope. If you're going to make a berenaise, you got uh, some sauteed shallots, or fresh shallots, and tarragon. Yeah. For steak. Pretty fired up, Matthew. Not ready. <laughs> I didn't see nothing, man. You're, you're good. <laughs> hot. Now we're gonna go ahead and toss in our oil in our pan, get it nice and hot. We want it around 300 degrees Fahrenheit to fry our potatoes, or 350. Preferably 350. Now that that's spinning, like spinning records, and the cracker egg, put it right in the middle. What? So the spinning action helps. It does. Right? I've, I've never seen this method in my life. Huh. That's what we're looking for right there. Mm -hmm. A smaller stump. Maybe it'll dry it up. But you can yeah, literally oven, cook yeah. anything you can in an oven, on a stove, on a fire. Got that right? It's a matter of heat. A matter of skill. Skill, <laughs> temperature. You can get as much heat from a fire as you can a stove. Even more. Even more. That's right. Well, I'm going to do this when I get home. Yeah. I'm going to make this on the fire and uh, really impress my fans. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Tell us the story that this salmon lived, Burpee. This is a three-day, four-day process to make these delicious smoked salmon bennies. Greg, you caught the fish. You secured it for two days. Smoked it. The day after that. And on the last day here, now we're having these all piled ready to go. We finally put all the components together for this dish. Nice. Any which way almost. I want to make you a salmon ceviche. I'll make a killer salmon ceviche. This looks so we have another good. piece of salmon. Oh. 
Potato Town. And there you have it, everybody. Smoke Salmon Benny, Greg Elvin's way. Yes, maybe all. Yeah, use that. Man. Uh -huh. that looks beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Nicely done, buddy. Potatoes are great. The sauce is going to be good, I know. I saw how we made it. Mm -hmm. That is good. Combination of that salmon, the sauce, I haven't got to the bread, but I don't have any. That is right on. Excellent. Looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, the color of the egg is. Ooh. You guys are going to be happy with Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting. I'll make this for my daughter because one of her favorites is eggs. Like, was the egg yolks? Egg yolks, butter, salt, acid. butter. You stir quick, and then um, yeah, and just butter and egg, eh? Mm. Pretty much. You and acid. And and you use some vinegar. Yeah. A and lemon juice. Salt. And some lemon juice. Okay. I probably use like three tablespoons, three or four. I like it more, I'm more acidic, but you can use less to make it just more buttery. Right. Has 500,000 on it and it doesn't even burn oil oh. and the oil stays brown like this engine I don't think it's original but look still full oil brown 500k on it 500,000 mm. but it can't be the original motor well it just runs too good to be have that many kilometers yeah right okay well we'll get our stuff down yeah. there well it's pretty full of water if you can grab the pump. Yep. Yeah, the tide's a lot higher than it was yesterday, eh? Oh, yeah. It's not too bad, but look at the water. Put your gloves. Oh, well, I don't care. I think we're going to have to get it pretty far up. Oh, okay, I can probably drain it there. Uh, I don't think it'll drain. I'll just flip it. Yeah, it's looking good. Just keep going. There's still some more coming out. It's a lot of water in there. There is, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Feeling lighter already. Yeah, it's still a little trickle, but 90% out. That's You're probably good, okay yeah. then. Oh, that's good. Yeah, throw the life jacket and the rest of the stuff, I guess. <laughs> uh oh. You're stepping on the valve and. Oh, no. <laughs> that's okay. The rope was on the valve. And he stepped on it and deflated us a bit, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll be okay. So we're just heading out to check our trap. We're hoping for the best. It's high tide, so there's a lot of big logs floating here. We just work our way through them. It's lightly raining, but it's not a downpour, so I think we're okay. Hoping for the best sure if that's it there. I think I might see it, actually. Yeah, I think I see it. Okay, we will see if we have anything. Pull us back. I had a lot of extra lines, so this drifted probably quite a ways, eh? Yeah. Thicker rope is easier to pull, obviously. Yeah, well, let's hope for the best, Chef. I'm praying. <laughs> There's our bigger rope. All right, the moment of truth, everybody. It's 
So what kind of crab uh, live in this area, do you, like, if, you, if you know? Dungeness and rock crab. Dungeness and rock crab, yeah. But today we're looking for Dungeness. Dungeness is the best. Okay, I see the trap. We got one, for sure. We only have one crab. One crab, everybody. Wow. Two, 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 two crabs. One on the very bottom. Huh? One on the very bottom there. Oh. Oh. No. There goes our crab. He was grabbing onto the bottom. How can we tell if a crab is a male or a female? Because on the bottom here, this is pointed. That's the male. If it was a female, it would have a round piece instead of uh, pointed. Well, there you have so it. So we're good to go. It's uh, six and a half inches, even if it was a dungeness, but it's a rock crab. And uh, it's good enough. That's something to put in our soup. Right, Chef? You got that right, everybody. Can't get fresher than this. No. We're going to just keep the trap in here because we did have success. One of the crab was on the outside and let go. Uh, these are rock crab. We wanted Dungeness, but hey, um, we got something. So, what is like the uh, the difference in flavor between the rock crab and Dungeness? Is uh, Dungeness more Dungeness sweet? Dungeness is a little better, a little sweeter, a little. But they're both good. Yeah. They're both very, very good. We'll pick up some Dungeness in town. Okay, well, we're just meeting up here at a place called Crabby Bob's. In Campbell River, they got all the seafood mostly that we need except for live lobster. Might have to go somewhere else to get that, but this seafood chowder is going to be awesome. So, just hang out here and wait for the boys. Crabby Abbey. Yeah. <laughs> and we got fresh oysters that just showed up. There we go. We got some medium-sized Pacific beach oysters. Okay. Yeah, they're a good size for us, I think. We're using uh, our milk as a base. Yep. And then uh, we can definitely toss in some, some fish broth as well, just to boost the flavor. Okay. And we're going to put in crab, lobster, uh, scallops. Uh, okay. Mussels, clams, and all. Mussels and clams? What do you guys think? Well, we're doing oysters. Oysters? Yeah. I, you know what? Clams, I think, ruin a seafood chowder. Yeah. If it's a clam chowder, it's one thing. So we'll, we'll uh, omit the clams and we'll stick with the oysters then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, we are set, job, Sam. <laughs> we came, we saw, we conquered. We went, we cooked. Yes, sir. We're making a movie. Wait. Sounds fun. You're eating lobster while you're eating. Uh, we've got a big, big seafood chowder. Sweet. Sounds yeah. yummy. What are we using this garlic for, Greg? Well, I mean, that's for our garlic butter for our crab that we're not going to put in the chowder. Oh, yeah, you got some big ones in the back there, right? What's that? Yeah, those are bigger ones. Yeah, that's one yeah, more. Yeah, one and a half are down below. Oh, okay. Well, one more of those and we're good. Got it. These are delicious. eyeballs. Fairy time. So, I am just waiting for the boys. I'm going to get the fire going, but... Um, Boy, this is going to be an expensive, big pot of chowder. Um, with all the seafood and ingredients in the pot and everything we needed, is a $600 pot of soup. It better be good. The lobster alone was $150. Uh, we did buy oysters because we ate all the ones we collected from the beach. But, we get some video of the chef making the broth. I'm going to get on the fire. Um, we had to buy a bunch of live crab because the trap only had one. But, very expensive pot of soup. We all pitched in, so it wasn't like one person paid for everything. But, it's going to be good. I think this thing probably came with a lid and I didn't grab it off the shelf. I'll bet you anything that came with a lid, because I know my other one did. And I probably just didn't think to grab the lid so often. Well, it's kind of exciting. People recognize Chef too, eh? Not surprising. Yeah, I know. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Ready for one more night of the cooking, everybody. Yeah, so... 
We got ourselves the chowder that we're doing, and it's gonna cost us. Well, it did cost us. It did not cost going us. to. Yeah. Six hundred dollar pot of chowder. Well, we've got oysters. We have live crab. We have live lobster. We have scallops. We have prawns. Uh, am I missing something? Sure, I don't know. And some potatoes, but... Potatoes. You know. But as far as seafood, it's going to be loaded. Tell the bird the whole ocean. Loaded. Okay, that's the ones we're using. So we probably can get lobster and all the crab in at once because we have to shell those other ones yet. So here we have our ingredients for our wonderful, wonderful chowder. Here we have some leeks, carrots, potatoes, lemons, garlic, onions, some shrimp heads to make a little flavorful broth that we're going to mix into our chowder. We may or may not do that. We'll see how it goes, depending on Greg's uh, opinion on that. Maybe we can just fry these heads up and eat them by themselves. Because those are also a really, really tasty snack, especially with the tamale inside of the heads. It is a delicacy, especially in Asia. I start off with making our liquid, our cooking liquids for the crabs. I'm gonna get some leeks here. Got some nice fresh carrots. Cut them in half. Skin on. We have a wind problem. That may solve that. I'm going to just toss in these cloves, just crushed after I peel them. Was your plan to throw these veggies in the boiling water with the crab? Yes. That's your idea? That's the idea. Typically you would make a thing called a corb bouillon to, to cook your seafood in and that would have like some white wine or some white wine vinegar and some lemon juice. But we're going to keep it simple with ice. And then we just wash the veggies. But you're not going to use any of the juice that we're cooking with. No, because, because the, 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 the crab. The foam that comes out from it is exactly. scum. We don't want to use that. That's, yeah, I got that's dirt nasty. Crush. Crush. <laughs> crush. I may have to add a couple pieces of wood because we do want it to boil, right? Mm -hmm. Like, especially for the, the crab and lobster. And, and it's gonna, the temperature is going to drop, especially after we put the, yes. the seafood in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna throw that guy in and then I'm gonna get a couple pieces of well, wood. It's about seven minutes after it comes to a boil. Ah, uh, it's more for the seafood. I know, I know, um, I guess, I guess, I guess, well, I guess for, 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 for lobster, we have the tails just by themselves. Right. Seven minutes, but exactly. You can usually tell by the foam and you can okay. tell by crab because the legs will fall off. Then you know. Okay. So it's not a hard thing to figure out if they're ready. It's almost boiling anyway, so it shouldn't take long. So. But I can probably put the crab in now. Hey, we will but do you want to go first? Cheers. Okay. <laughs> right into there. Okay, so we have our crab in there. Bye bye, buddy. Oh, we should maybe take the lobster or oh, oh, the, uh, the elastics off. off. Well, the elastics off their claws. I mean, we might get some kind that, of tainted. Uh, that seems like a taste. Oh, he got me. What? Good idea. That's yeah. what you get. Did you get that on Philip? Oh yeah. Oh good. It hurt a bit, but he just just got a little bit of skin. It wasn't bad. It could have been worse. Yep, that'll all just fit fine. I'm for sure it will. Our lobster and crab are now done cooking. They've been in our corpillon, our, our boule corpillon, for about, how long do you think would it be this? I'd say 20 minutes, but it wasn't a full boil at first. So. That's right, that's right. But it smells nice and aromatic. Done. I think they're done. If they're not really fully done, they're just gonna cook for the remainder in our chowder base. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so. I'll put this on the ground so I don't yeah, my hands off. Exactly. There's a lot of water in here, eh? Wait, you don't want to steam your hands off? Oh, that's crazy. 
Yeah, like a there's a lot of, of aroma now. there. Uh, a lot of aroma. Now I see why you do the vegetables before. Mr. Matthew. Look at the red lobster. They look beautiful, eh? Yeah, they do. How many? Um, All of them? Yeah. This is beautiful teamwork. Yes, isn't it? I like it. I can bring it. Alright. <laughs> Real thin. Move. <laughs> Maybe the lobster can't go in. They're piping hot. Oh, right, well, they will be. Right in the lap. <laughs> they definitely will be. Matthew, how are you, how are you feeling right now? You feeling a little skinny? Yeah, I got a nice, uh, nice facial. And there's the one we caught today. Right here? Yeah. That rock crab. And we are back. <laughs> so, potatoes are in, garlic is in. We have some nice thyme in there. It's already infused for a few minutes there, so we're going to go ahead and toss in some flour for our roux. I'm going to put maybe about three spoons in or two spoons. Now the most important thing when making a roux is to get to the gelatinization point of the flour mixed with the butter. That's when it becomes kind of a gel stage. It becomes a lot easier for you to add liquors to it and then thicken that up as a whole. Smoke keeps getting in my eye. And I don't like it because I don't like being blind. That smells divine. As my grandma would say. Good old Nan Nan. I'm on prawn duty now. These are a lot harder to peel when they're raw than cooked. Look at this. <laughs> That's a chowder, buddy. We'll have to try the milk base. I'm I intrigued. Do. What's in there? What's I the green? I especially do. This is what we're after, Chef. Yes. That's the approval that I need, everybody. Once again, that validation makes me feel like more of a chef than ever. Got that, that right. No, that's excellent. So now, boy, oh boy, when our seafood just simmers in that for a little bit. Yep. Oh boy, oh boy. Unbelievable. Just boil before we add our seafood. Correct, because I want to have the starch uh, really absorb as much liquid as possible so we get the maximum thickness out of it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. It tastes good. It's going to be good. And nobody's going to be able to stay out of it. But that's going to be the problem. Now, it's quite thick. We, we could loosen up with some more milk. I think a bit more milk. I think it's really thick like a stew. I think I think a little more milk. Would you like to do a little stirring as that I, pour? I can stir it is very thick, okay? Just let it sit for a few minutes and we're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. Cheers. We did it. How yeah. much do you think this bowl costs? Mm. I don't know, I guess not that much, but 20? No, maybe more. It's pretty packed full of seafood. I know. If we were to sell this per bowl like this, Easily fifty dollars. This is more seafood you get in like lobster ravioli. They charge their quickest five dollars for that. I'm going back for seconds for it. Excellent deck. Now boys, let's get you some guys food. better get in. Well, anyways, I'll just explain <laughs> what we're doing. So basically what we're doing is chef and I now Matthew is big on TikTok. I mean, he gets like 12, 13 million hits on TikTok. 
Oh, stop. For, well, it's true. <laughs> for his videos about ask me anything about food. So, we're going to do that here in Campbell River. And basically, I'm going to have my own little sign. We're going to see how this goes. Lighting's kind of bad for me. But, uh, he's going to ask or questions about food again, right, Chef? Yep, yep. And I'll do something different. I'll have my sign. We'll work together. It'll be, ask me anything about bushcraft. So let's see what kind of questions I get about bushcraft and what kind of questions Chef gets about food. Right on. We're going to make our signs. Let's get to it. The key about writing these signs is seeing the letters and words on the sign before you start. And being able to spell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'll get you to do it. his lines already <laughs> Perfect, there's my sign. Yeah, big. <laughs> yeah, you gotta show your sign to the camera. And here we go. Ask me, Chef Matthew Burby Jones, anything about food. I don't think we'll have to be here too long and people will recognize one of us. Oh, yeah. And him about bushcraft. What's that? And ask, ask Greg Evans here about bushcraft. What's bushcraft. Anything about bushcraft. Survival. Outdoor survival. Oh, okay. That's what I do. I teach wilderness survival. Oh, my husband's coming here. You love that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> 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 about food, all right? What about food? Anything. Is bruschetta good for you? I would say so, for sure. It's like fresh vegetables. You know, a, a little bit of carbohydrate from, from the bread itself. Mm -hmm. But it's delicious and I love it. I do it's super tasty. What bushcraft? Outdoor survival. Bushcraft. Yeah, so. For 300 points, a leafy green that tastes like lemon and usually used in soup. Lemon verbena? Sorrel. 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 Sheep sorrel or wood sorrel? Yeah, like the, the one that's about this big. Looks like a little spinach plant. Okay, so you, you have sheep sorrel here on the island. I can even answer this. Yeah. And wood sorrel. Where I come from, we have mountain sorrel and sheep sorrel. What's the difference? What's There's the three types of. Uh, pardon? What's the stuff that'd be in like Hungary in Europe? Uh, well, the sheep sorrel, it's got two wings on the side. This should be the stuff you have here, the sheep sorrel with a big leaf in the middle. Mm -hmm. wood, wood sorrel looks like clover with three leaves. And, and mountain sorrel, sorrel maybe, is round. Maybe the sheep the sheep sorrel. And there's also blood sorrel too, right? Uh, the only three we have here is, is the three. Yes, there is. Okay. So I answered a food question. You did, yeah. <laughs> did you watch me? Well, come and say hi then. We're, we're filming this for a movie. Oh, you are? We're doing a movie. We have camera crews all over, see? <laughs> What, so what question did you have? I didn't have any question. I just recognized you from the TV show. Oh. I thought I recognized you. I'm like, no, I don't know okay. that guy. And then I remember watching right. that show. Last okay. week, you to see Greg Evans. Well, it, I love the island. I come three, four times a year. Hmm. Salmon. Salmon is great. I love the island. So. I love it here, too. It's beautiful. Today's actually a really nice day. You guys don't it like is. It. Yeah. Last night was just pouring rain. Yeah. Wind. Did you watch the truck parade? No. I didn't. We were on Quadra. Oh, We've been on. Yeah, you might not have been able to see it. No. But yeah, it was windy and rainy. I got wet because I'm in my hammock. So. You're in your hammock. I'm in my hammock year round. You're crazy. Yeah, that's what they say. I don't know if it's true. I mean, I just love that lifestyle. Well, it's nice meeting you. I've got to go. Nice to meet you have too. Day, Take, care. Day. Take care. How's it going? Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I recognize your face, but I don't know where from. What's your name? Uh, my name is Greg from the Alone Show. Um, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season three. Oh, okay. We have a question in the parking lot. Yeah. So. So about deer, I had a question about calling. Calling the deer, yes. Yeah. So we're like an estrus fleet, which wouldn't really matter now because mm -hmm. ruts over. But like in general, what's your kind of what do you find works for calling them in on like an estrus fleet potentially? And not like basically the same. Just relax them, like. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I mean, sense. every hunter is going to give you a different answer oh, too, right? Be, yeah. Because there, a lot of it is a matter of opinion. It's opinion. And I mean, it depends on if you're bow hunting or rifle, whatever you're doing. 
Rifle. I do, yeah, rifle for sure. Bow hunting, man, I mean, that's, you, you gotta have your blind, you gotta oh, have yeah. a trail, it's, uh, a, uh, it's no, complicated, it's and <laughs> nine times out of 10, you can't even get close enough for a shot. If you, yeah. you yeah, know what I mean, but. Yeah, my a lot of bow hunting, and right. I don't know why he does it to himself, but I do have one other question about fish that I'd like to take the guess okay. so. well, My what cast? Is, <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite cutthroat or rainbow? I prefer rainbow. Rainbow? Rainbow. Okay. But my favorite trout is bull trout. Oh, uh, bull okay. trout. I think it's even yet. better. It's better even. Better fight, uh, I imagine, too. Better fight, better meat, Ooh, in my opinion. Eating. Yeah, they're great eating bull trout. Well. Uh, you know, that's my favorite trout. My yeah. favorite fish is burbot. Oh. Hey? Oh, yeah. Gotta love the burbot, man. Oh, they've had burbot. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Oh, nice. oh it's, it's like, it's fresh ling cod, basically. Yeah, it's like a and freshwater it, cod. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just dynamite. Big flaky meat. Probably best freshwater the, fish the, there. And the best fish and chips going. There's no doubt of that. It's just great to hang out with Matthew. It's great to hang out with Mr. Gray. Thank you. Of all the days to go this, and do this, this, uh, this bit. This is the best day we've this had. This is. It's not windy sun for the first time since we've been here mm -hmm. you know it's just a taste of what it's like in the, in the summertime yeah absolutely yes. hello hello do you guys have permission to be here permission yeah oh you're the the superstore uh manager yeah i yep. am oh you are yep. do we need permission or what uh, yeah. do we oh okay we're not, we're not like harassing anybody or anything. No, like it's that. still like it's a lot of attention and mm -hmm. that we really don't want. Okay. Should we go somewhere else? You can go somewhere else. You could even go down there if you went beside Rogers or Rogers, my God. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Ciao. She was on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I'm on everything. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, they don't want us here. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my truck and cry. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think we're harassing anybody. No, you're not doing any harm. No, we're just trying to share some knowledge, but you see people, they don't want you sharing knowledge. They'd rather keep, a, keep us like mushrooms in the dark. Okay, we'll see you later. Did you get that? Okay, I want that. One last recovery of the crab trap. Hopefully there's a couple dungeons, but we do have crab anyway, so it's not the end of the world if there's nothing. Pretty calm morning. Yeah, but you see the other side is not calm on the other side. Oh yeah. That's the nice thing about these bays is they just stay protected and so it's more of my style. It doesn't look good. I don't see the jug anywhere. This is where it should be. Looking around, not seeing anything. You know, unless somebody decided to pull our trap up, because that's happened to me before, where somebody grabbed my trap. So I would say maybe something like that happened. We either got sleuthed by a fisherman or a motor. Or something, something happened, because it's not here. That's the third time that I've lost traps to thieves. Back the Zodiac up, and that's the end of her. I thought that white thing was it, but it's not, so... Well... Today we're making an oysters burpafeller. Not rocket feller, burpafeller with my own little twist on it. From the Tom's Classic to the brand new recipe that I'm making today. Nice thick cut bacon. We're going to be going ahead and cutting this into lardons. The shape of a lardon is like so. 
like this. We're gonna be rendering these down, getting out all that fat and making them nice and crispy because who does not like crispy bacon bits? Next, we're gonna begin our ingredients for our nice compound butter. Here we have some butter that we used previously that we melted down. We're gonna use this and not let it go to waste. So into the bowl that we had our bacon in, we're gonna take the rest of our butter and add it to that. Butter into the pot. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and grate some of our garlic. We're using about five cloves of garlic here today for about 10 oysters or so. You can adjust to whatever garlic you want it. But like you know, truth be told, take in mind, I'm a garlic boy myself. And zest some lemon. Already this is smelling so delicious. We're gonna adjust the heat, adjust the temperature on this by moving it off the heat. Look at all the fat that is rendered out of this bacon. And look how the pieces here are now getting to be somewhat crispy. We're gonna, we're gonna cook this for maybe a few more minutes. And then we're gonna take it off the heat and drain the fat. And we're gonna incorporate that into our finished butter, compound butter mixture. Bacon, now done. It's now rendered out to the point where I like it. It's gonna go over here. Mind you, on a little angle, so the fat does not reincorporate into our bacon. Preferably on a lower heat, so we're gonna be putting our butter with our garlic and our lemon zest. Next, we're gonna add our bacon into our bowl. Time to deglaze with the white wine. We're gonna get all the mired reaction bits left over from the bacon cooking. Now that I finished deglazing the fawn from the bottom of the, the pan, it's gonna go into our butter with our aromatics. We're gonna take this off the heat and place it onto the ground. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and cut our parsley and add it to our mixture. Add our parsley, our bacon, to our sauce, let it infuse. We're gonna do our oysters, crack them open, put them over the fire, put a spoon of sauce in each one, cook it until it's done, and Oysters, Brit Propeller, everybody. Cook until it's done. Oysters, Brit Propeller, everybody. Give us a little try now, shall we, guys? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oyster shucking 101. This is called an oyster shucker. This is called an oyster. This is a rag that we're going to use to keep our oyster in place and to protect ourselves from stabbing into our fingers, which sucks a lot. So, into the back of the oyster. Crack, find that to wedge it in there, crack it open. Like so, hold, wedge it open with your finger there, hold it open. Now you're gonna feel through the back of it, there's a connective part on the abductor muscle. You're just gonna wedge through, peel it off, get out any unwanted bits, go around, disconnect it, and give it a flip. And that's how you shuck an oyster.
Now we want to try and keep as much of the oyster liquor inside as possible. That's going to help give us some extra flavor. How should I go about eating this, you think? I've never had an oyster made in this, in this preparation before. This is the first for me. But I'm thinking that, that it's gonna taste really, really good. And it's gonna mask a lot of the flavor of the oyster that I'm not a fan of. Is it a one, one biter here? Is it a two biter? I don't know. Bloody hot though. I'm butchering this so much. Here we go. Bite number one. Let's try this, folks. Oh man. <laughs> That's a winner in my books. Let's go for the rest of this now. You can taste the acid from the lemon, the aroma from the skin, the rind, the richness of the bacon with a nice good crunchy texture, and the vibrance that comes from the fresh parsley. Thank you, Chef Matthew Burby Jones. Oh, you're welcome, me. All right, just a little introduction. My name is Chef Matthew Burby Jones. This is Greg Oven, Sam Warsh, and Benjamin Warsh. Right now, I'm just melting up some garlic butter that's solidified in this cool weather. So I can finally and finalize finishing my wonderful Dungeness crab. You've been saying all week that you're going to be trying some of these recipes out when you're by yourself. Is there one that uh, you're going to give a, give a go first? Well, I'm going to make the charter again, obviously, but yeah. The eggs, Benny, were dynamite. It was all really good. So, you know, I'm going to incorporate some of these cooking things into my videos. Excellent. People like the catch and cooks. They like the cooking on the fire. But spruce it up and go a step further and just do a little better job, right? Yeah. Everybody likes good food. After uh, all the time that you've spent out in the bush and just doing different hunting, fishing, foraging, I'm sure you've had like a lot of dicey situations that you've maybe got yourself into by accidentally. Um, I'm just, oh, yeah, and I'm just wondering like, out of all of them, is there one thing that stands out to you? Like, this was, like, my closest, like, dance with death. You know what I mean? Like, and do you, like, think about it still type type of thing? Well, I mean, I've had probably eight or nine situations where I probably shouldn't have survived. But without the knowledge I had, most people wouldn't have. I mean, I've been stranded half a dozen times, charged by grizzly bears, um, hypothermic, fallen in rivers, fallen through frozen lakes into the lake, uh, all kinds of things. And so really, I shouldn't even be here, but it's the knowledge, the accumulated knowledge of, okay, now, now we gotta, and in a lot of instances, like a couple times, I fell into a, a river that was frozen and almost got swept away and then a lake one time but the one i mean the lake situation i already had my fire going so i had my fire going ahead of time before i went out there 
so that was good. And, um, you know, like I say, I could write a book on, on all the situations, and that's what my fireside chats are about, is telling some of these stories. So I haven't even, I've just started the fireside chat. I think I've only got three of them out. There will be a hundred more. So, and they're doing really I, I well. I couldn't sit here and, yeah, I couldn't sit and, and explain every situation in an hour or two hours or two days. We're going to throw some meat on the grill. Maybe we'll even let the camera run and turn the mic off and just let those viewers just see that meat grill ASMR. And uh, signing out, H&N, collaboration with the legendary Greg Ovens, Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. And happy news network. Thanks for coming, boys. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We're at the final leg of this journey with Greg. Yep. And uh, just in quite it's been the great. It's been great. This is uh, the team signing out. Signing.